Okay, let's talk about the old NTSC signal a little bit. There's something called a back porch or front porch. Basically, I'm going to show you, show you uh, uh, an example of the NTSC system here. It is one line of horizontal that we're looking at right now, and it has a front porch. The front porch has a color burst on it, and the color burst is just a little bitty uh, snippet of 3.579545, and that's used to keep your color oscillators running in your television set. And then you go to a sync pulse. This is a horizontal sync pulse. Then you have your back ports. Then you have uh, your one line of horizontal signal, which you'd look at on a waveform monitor. And that would be a horizontal line. And if you look at the components on this, when things are going high like when it's going vertical when it's going higher it's brighter and when it's going lower it's darker and we are using this on a scale called IRE and in the old days when we we're doing broadcast television you never went above a hundred IRE which was considered maximum bright you never went below 7.5 IRE which was your black anything below 7.5 IRE was called blacker than black and so whenever we shot our television on our camera, we would use something called a video processing amplifier, or we'd actually adjust the gains on our camera to make sure that our video signal was always between 100 peak and 7.5 trough. And that would allow us to maintain a quality signal. In the old days, if you went higher than 100 IRE, then that would hit the transmitter, and what, what would happen is you'd have a buzz in your audio if the white got too bright. And if the black got too dark, a lot of your sync was happening below 7.5 IRE, and so that could confuse your sync circuitry. So you had to be really careful to keep it above 7.5 and below 100. Now, today in the digital world, it's not as big of a deal. You'll actually see uh, it, uh, an IRE rating of zero as black and maybe 110 as white because people want that extra contrast. Um, but those are, that's how that relates, and that's how that signal relates to a picture you'd see on a waveform monitor. And then that's looking on the horizontal, one horizontal line. You could also look at a vertical field or a vertical frame, and you can see all the lines going across on your waveform monitor. The waveform monitor was used to show you video level, okay? And then the vector scope was used to show you color, it's still used to show you color. And what we'd do is we'd take something called sympty color bars, we'd send a, a, a signal of sympty color bars, and we would align our signals using our waveform monitors to make every, sure everything was correct. In uh, vector scope, all the little dots that represented colors would go in, in the little boxes on the vector scope, and when you got that all aligned where the where the dots were in the boxes on your vector scope, then your color was in alignment and the correct level. It was the right phase and the right level. And then we would get our, our, our amplitude of our, of our video signal correct on our waveform monitor. And that included, you know, the whites at a, uh, less than 100 and the blacks more than 7.5. The sync pulses would extend, extend down to minus 40 for your sync pulse, and that had to line up below black. And so that's how we would align with our waveform monitor and vector scope. And all these components, all these components would be used to align our signal so that it was always correct all the time when it went out on air. Uh, nowadays with digital, it's a lot more automatic. Um, we don't have adjustments like we used to, you know, in the NTSC, you had something called a processing amplifier a proc amp and you could adjust your burst phase, your chroma level, your brightness level, your black level, and all of these various things to along the signal path because in analog you always had a certain amount of drift along the signal path and you'd have like a proc amp here and you go down to another location and, a, and another proc amp would recover what you'd lost in transmission to bring the signal back to the correct levels. Now with digital, you don't have all those handles in the middle, so getting a signal correct as far as levels is basically done at the camera or in post-production. 
And so you get it correct at the very beginning and it should stay correct all the way down the signal transmission path.